Hello friends, I am Vikas Mehra. Welcome you all to our live Linux training for members. This is session number 38 and in this session we will talk about the booting process of RHEL 8. We have already discussed the general booting sequence of Linux in our very first session of training. But that was the basic Linux booting process which we have discussed in the very first session. Here we will go in detail of the booting process of RHEL 8 and discuss each and every segment of this booting sequence. It's very important to understand the concept of RHEL 8 booting sequence. Here we can not only know how the system boots up, but also how can we change or control the boot process. Here in this tutorial, I will describe you the booting process of RHEL 8 as well as I will describe how can you set the default target and how can you boot the system to a known default target. If you know the concept of RHEL 8 booting process, you can control it and you can easily perform the various tasks like you can reset the forgotten root password through the single user mode, you can set and remove the password at grub, you can fix the corrupted initram fs files, you can restore the corrupted booting files like grub.cfg and you can boot into the rescue mode by using the rescue kernel and many more. Now, before starting the session, we must know the concept of booting. We must know what does booting mean. The process of copying files of operating system on RAM from the hard disk drive is called the booting. Whenever we start the machine, the system copies the files on the memory from the hard disk and this process is known as the booting process. Booting files are generally located in slash boot directory which are loaded on RAM in a sequence and then allows us to use the system after loading all the services and the OS components. It starts with the post operation which is called the power on self test. When we turn on our machine or press the power button in case of the physical machine, electric current flows to the all attached components including the motherboard and then the motherboard sends a signal to each and every hardware component just to check whether they are in the proper working condition or not. After getting the acknowledgement from all the hardware components, it hands over the control to the BIOS. You may hear one or two beeps during this process, which means everything is good. In case of any errors, there will be continuous beeping many times. BIOS is called the basic input output system. It is located in form of a chip or the integrated circuit on the motherboard which contains a program. So it is a combination of hardware as well as software. This BIOS program works like a firmware. Here you can make limited changes which are saved on CMOS with the help of a battery. CMOS contains a copy of the original BIOS with the updated settings which are maintained with the help of the CMOS battery. Here you can select or change the default booting device like the hard disk, the network, USB drive like CD-ROM. Nowadays, it has been replaced by UEFI, which is the advanced version of the BIOS, which provides you more flexibility and easy to use interface. You can use mouse pointer there on GUI to make the changes in UEFI. BIOS contains the information about all the booting devices which are attached to our machine. BIOS then gives the control to the MBR. MBR is called the master boot record. It is located in the first sector of the storage device with which you want to boot up your machine. Its size is 512 bytes. And out of these 512 bytes, 440 bytes are reserved for the code. 4 bytes are reserved for the disk signature. 2 bytes are reserved for the nulls. 
and 64 bytes are reserved for the partition table. Out of these 64 bytes, 16 bytes per primary partitions are allocated and there may be total number of 4 partitions which MBR can support. So in total, there are 64 bytes reserved for the partition table and 2 bytes are reserved for the MBR signature. The 440 bytes which are reserved for the code, these are for the primary bootloader. It is not the main bootloader. It only keeps the sector information regarding the main bootloader, which is the grub2, which is located in the slash boot directory or the slash boot file system. Then it points to the main bootloader, which is grub2. Grub2 is the grand unified bootloader version 2. It loads the kernel into the memory or RAM. It provides us the grub menu where we can select the desired kernel to boot up our machine or it will automatically boot up the machine from the default kernel if it does not receive the input from the user within a period of time, generally 5 seconds. Here we can select the other kernel in case we need to boot up our machine in the rescue mode. Grub2 load its configuration from slash boot slash grub2 slash grub.cfg file which provides us the grub menu to select the kernel then it provides you the option to select the kernel to boot up your machine in form of the boot menu then it loads the selected or default vm liners kernel image from slash boot slash vm liners 4.18 or higher and then it extracts the contents of init ram fs image from this slash boot partition once the init ram fs and the kernel are loaded into the memory grub hands over the control to the kernel vm liners is the linux kernel rhl8 uses kernel version 4.18 or higher now kernel try to mount the root file system and try to start the system d process but it requires modules for this process and the drivers to initialize the hardware so where will the kernel look for these modules and drivers the kernel will get all the modules or drivers from initram fs which is already extracted from slash boot and is present in the memory then the kernel initializes all the hardware components for which it can find a driver in the initram fs after that kernel executes slash as bin slash init its process id is assigned as one and on rhl8 slash as bin slash init is a soft link to the system d the kernel executes slash as bin slash init from the initram fs as the first process having the process id as 1 and on rhl8 it has been replaced with system d and slash s bin slash init file is a soft link to the system d if you will run the ls hyphen l slash s bin slash init command it will show you that it is a soft link to the system d which is located in slash lib slash system d slash system directory here in RHL8, systemd is the first process or the parent of all the other processes. And the location of the same is slash lib slash systemd slash system. And it starts at the booting of the system and keeps running till the machine is running. It is the final process also in Linux which stops at last. It controls the final process of booting and prepares the system for use by loading other services and OS components. Systemd executes init rd dot target. It executes all units for init rd dot target. This includes mounting the root file system on the disk at the slash sysroot directory for the temporary basis. With the help of initramfs, systemd executes all units for init 
rd.target on rhel8 run levels are called as the targets and there are total number of 7 run levels present in linux this includes mounting the root file system on the disk at slash sys root directory and then it switches the root file system permanently from the slash sys root to the slash directory now system d reexecutes as system version kernel root file system switched from initram fs root that is slash sys root to the system root file system that is slash after that the system d looks for the default target and this file decides the run level to boot up the machine and the location of the file is slash etc slash system d slash system slash default dot target system d reads the file linked by slash etc slash system d slash system slash default dot target to determine the default system target or the run level run levels are also called the targets in rhel 8 if you execute the ls hyphen l command for the same you will find that it is a soft link to the graphical dot target file that is there in slash usr slash lib slash system d slash system directory and we can change or set the default target very easily there are total 7 targets or the run levels available in rhl 8 which can be used to boot up the machine in different modes as per the requirement we can set the desired target or the run level in the system as default target to boot up the machine by using this command and the command is systemctl set hyphen default and after that we can mention the target which we want to set by default to boot up our machine if you want to list the available targets the total seven targets you can execute ls hyphen l slash lib slash system d slash system slash run level asterisk target command and this will show you all the targets or the run levels starting from 0 to 6 so there are in total seven run levels available in linux as i told you earlier after that the system d process start the other services in our machine and load the other os components and after that we can use the machine so guys this was all about the booting process of rhel8 hope you guys will find this video useful for you if you like it then do share it with your friends and colleagues and if you are new on our channel then please subscribe us and turn on the bell notification to receive the updates of our videos directly in your device i'll see you in the next one till then bye bye jai hind vande mataram take care